Hey besties, metabolic alkalosis is when your body swings too far into the alkaline zone. Like it's just downed a gallon of antacids because it thought heartburn was the biggest threat to its existence. The pH is climbing higher than a caffeine intake during finals week and your patient's body is not having it. Buckle up because we're about to break it down Nurse Chung style. Let's get started. So let's take a look at the three biggest culprits behind metabolic alkalosis. Our first cause is the gastrointestinal system, also known as the vomit volcano. Your stomach is basically an acid making machine. It's constantly cranking out hydrochloric acid like restaurants serving bottomless mimosas. But what happens when your patient can't keep anything down and vomits nonstop? Well, number one, they're throwing up all of that stomach acid, all of that hydrochloric acid. Then your body is going to lose too many hydrogen ions, which is what makes the body acidic. So ultimately, what's left in the bloodstream? Bicarbonate, HCO3 negative, a base. Ultimately, your pH is going to skyrocket and boom, metabolic alkalosis. But wait. Gastric suctioning also does this as well. If your patient has an NG tube that's hooked up to continuous suctioning, guess what? This tube is literally sucking the acid out of your stomach like a vacuum cleaner. So we ultimately have the same problem. Too much stomach acid is going to be lost, too much base is going to be left over, and we're going to have metabolic alkalosis. Cause number two is too much base ingestion, also known as the antacid addict. Some people just love their antacids, whether it's because of chronic heartburn, acid reflux, or an irrational fear of feeling even a single ounce of acidity. They actually treat Tums like they're Skittles, and before you know it, their blood is so basic that they could teach intro to chemistry. So what's happening in the body? Well, bicarbonate, HCO3 negative, is a base. Your body needs some of this bicarbonate to help neutralize the acid and keep the pH in check. But when you chug too many bicarb containing acids like Tums, Alka-Seltzer, baking soda, yes, there are some people that drink that, your body starts hoarding onto bicarbonate. More bicarbonate means that we're going to have more base, which means the pH is going to skyrocket. Your blood goes from slightly basic to full on alkaline territory, and your body does not like being this basic. And then lastly, we have the renal system, which are the overachieving kidneys. The kidneys are the body's natural filtration system, and sometimes they try a little bit too hard and end up making a mess. Enter aldosterone, the control freak of the hormone world. Aldosterone loves power and wants to run the show, especially when it comes to fluid and electrolyte balance. But when it gets a little too excited or straight up just out of control, it starts micromanaging the kidneys to make some questionable decisions. So what happens when aldosterone goes wild? Well, aldosterone normally helps regulate sodium and potassium levels, but certain conditions like adrenal tumors, dehydration from loop or thiazide diuretics, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system kicks into overdrive or vomiting and diarrhea, we tend to see some issues with our system. This is going to force the kidneys to start dumping hydrogen ions. Remember, hydrogen ions are our acid, and they're going to start hoarding or holding on to bicarbonate, our HCO3 negative, which is our base in the distal convoluted tubules. So what does that give us? It gives us a pH mess where the blood gets too basic and the urine gets too acidic. Acidic. And last up, we have hypokalemia. Potassium is supposed to live mostly inside of our cells, intracellular, while hydrogen ions are mostly hanging outside of our cells in the blood, extracellular. But when potassium levels drop too low, like we see with hypokalemia, the body has to compensate, and that's when things get a little messy. So here's our chain reaction of doom. Number one is we see low potassium outside of our cells and the body begins to panic. To fix this, they start pulling out all of the intracellular potassium into our extracellular fluid. But since all of our cells need to maintain balance, it's going to start shoving all of the extracellular hydrogen into our cells. So less hydrogen ions in the blood means the pH is going to go up and we're going to see metabolic alkalosis. So let's break down how the lungs try and fail to save the day. Ultimately, the brain is going to sense the pH crisis. The body has built 
built-in sensors known as chemoreceptors that constantly monitor pH levels like a nosy neighbor watching the street. When pH rises in alkalosis, the receptors go, whoa, we're getting way too basic down here. Let's slow down that breathing and hold on to some CO2. To compensate, the brainstem is going to signal the respiratory center to decrease the respiratory rate and depth, aka hypoventilation, and holds on to carbon dioxide. Because CO2 is acidic, the body thinks it's holding on to what it needs to bring the pH back down to normal. But here's the thing. Slowing down breathing only works up to a point because holding on to too much CO2 is going to trigger a whole new set of problems. Once those CO2 levels raise too high, the chemoreceptors are going to go, okay, now we have too much CO2. Time to speed that breathing back up again. So even though the body tries to compensate, the lungs can't slow down forever. Otherwise, the patient would stop breathing altogether, and that's... Uh, not ideal. So next, let's break this down system by system and see how much of a mess this really is. So starting with the neurological system, your brain runs on electrolytes, especially potassium and calcium. And when alkalosis messes those things up, things get really weird really fast. In metabolic alkalosis, calcium binds more to albumin in the blood, which lowers the free calcium levels that we see, leading to hypocalcemia. Potassium shifts into the cells, causing hypokalemia. And due to this, we're going to start to see things like dizziness, confusion, irritability, like the brain is running on glitch mode. Seizures can happen in more severe cases because neurons are firing way too fast. Next up, we have the musculoskeletal system and the muscles are starting to freak out. Because alkalosis affects electrolytes, this means our muscles are going to start misfiring. Low potassium means we're going to see weakness and cramps. Low calcium means we're going to start to see twitching and tetany. Then we have the cardiovascular system and the heart just starts acting up. Low potassium levels are going to mess with the heart's electrical activity. So expect that you're going to see some irregular heart rhythms. And then with low calcium levels, that's going to ultimately affect the strength of the heart's contractions. So hypotension is a possibility. Now with the respiratory system, what we could see is slow and shallow breathing with hypoventilation, like you're in a deep sluggish sleep. And because of that slow breathing, which is compensatory hypoventilation, we can start to see hypoxia take place. If we have hypoventilation, we're also going to see CO2 buildup, which is only going to go so far before we start to see oxygen levels drop. So that can lead to respiratory distress if it's severe enough. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to intervene STAT. To remember what exactly we're going to do, we're going to use a mnemonic BASIC because, well, metabolic alkalosis is a little too basic. So our B stands for breathe slow, watch our respiratory. We want to assess respiratory rate and depth. Is it dangerously too slow? We want to monitor oxygen saturation, SpO2, because if breathing is too shallow, the patient might not have enough oxygen. And we want to be ready to intervene if CO2 levels get a little too high. In severe cases, your patient might need respiratory support. For A, we want to assess our electrolytes and replace if needed. We really want to be monitoring those potassium, calcium, and chloride levels. We want to make sure that we're replacing potassium either oral or IV if it's too low because alkalosis won't correct without it. We really want to be watching for signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia, which is those tingling, twitching, and spasms. And we can give chloride-rich fluids like normal saline to help restore that balance. And for S, we want to stop the base overload and fix the cause. Alkalosis doesn't just happen for no reason. We need to figure out why. If the reason is vomiting, we want to give antiemetics. We can give Zofan, we can give metoclopramide, we have to stop the acid loss. If NG tube suctioning is taking place, we want to adjust the settings to stop continuous suction to prevent excess acid loss. If diuretics is the cause, we want to evaluate the need for these diuretics and potentially switch to a potassium sparing diuretic like spirolactone. And then of course, if anti-acid overdose is the issue, we want to make sure that we're educating our patients to stop taking so many Tums. And then for our eye, we have IV fluids and meds to restore balance. If alkalosis is caused by fluid loss, like we see in vomiting, 
diuretics, and dehydration, the patient needs volume replacement. We want to give IV normal saline, also known as 0.9% NaCl, because what it's going to do is it's going to restore chloride and sodium levels to help the kidneys excrete excess bicarb. We may also want to consider giving a medication like Diamox. This is a diuretic that helps the kidneys dump bicarb and correct alkalosis. And then lastly, C, we want to check ABGs and monitor vitals. Metabolic alkalosis can turn dangerous very fast. We want to be frequently checking ABGs to make sure that the pH is going down and CO2 isn't rising too much. We're going to be monitoring those heart rhythms, also known as ECGs, to see if hypokalemia is causing any of those nasty arrhythmias. We also want to make sure that we're checking urine output and kidney functions. Are the kidneys helping or are they making things worse? And then lastly, we always want to check for mental status. If there's any confusion taking place, it's a sign that there's a possibility that the alkalosis is worsening. All right, besties, the next time you see a patient with a pH higher than the clouds, a potassium level dropping faster than our motivation on a Monday, and breathing that slower than the hospital's Wi-Fi, you're going to know exactly exactly what to do. If this video helped you, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, make sure you drop a comment down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechunkstore.com where you can get access to the PowerPoint as well as practice questions regarding ABGs. And until next time, stay sharp, stay sassy, and keep saving lives. Nurse Chung out. Bye!